Can I win the game? Like we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I actually win on the next turn. That's good. Four damage. Should be good enough. So we play it before we go for the card. Or we play land or something. So we deal the maximum damage. And as you can see, our top 400 cannot really go against our super cool runes. <laughs> you know what? We take this one turn off and we will win uh, and we will like get value for the rest of the game. All right, we have the setup. This is a very nice draw. Hello everyone, it's Love here and today we are going completely off the script with a room control, something you wanted to see but you never seen and we beat some of the best players in the world with this deck so you know what, I'll take it. So uh, just to keep you short, what is what? Uh, our most important one is Smoky Lounge because it creates two mana a turn after you play it. It also creates a creature that you don't really care about. Uh, the cool part is that Roaring Furnace, one of the parts kills the creature one of the part draws a card. So if you can go for the steaming sauna, that's your powerhouse play. Uh, you can play it surprisingly quickly if you get the extra mana from the launch and you get two cards a turn and you take over the game. We also have counter spells and yeah, central elevator is how you win the game. Basically, you can find a room with this one that you don't have already uh, or you can just survey one and if you have eight different rooms unlocked with different names, you win the game. And this can be your win con if everything else fails or just play whales and, and just hit them. Uh, this one exiles a card every single turn, a dab keep, and the other part makes you pay zero for it. We don't really use it. It's all about drawing card and having new different named room so we can, you know, get the central elevator. And this one can tap a creature so we can kill it later and we can draw some cards. So that's it. Ill-timed explosion is absolutely amazing with rooms because it uses the converted mana cost of both of them. So we actually burn your opponent for insane amounts. Like you can deal seven, eight damage easily with this one to the whole board while also drawing cards. So guys, that's that's it for today. If you want to support the channel, check out the Patreon and I hope you'll have a lot of fun today. So enjoy. Who are you? Show me. All right. I mean, he is a real mate. <laughs> and sure. Man, absolutely love it. I have so much to discard, bro. Okay, this is a nice draw. Uh, but they're on the play, so they will play talent first, which is unfortunate. Here we go. Being on the draw sucks, and I mean, there's not much you can do about it. I think we go with the meat locker. It is a good card, uh, but we need to play different. Oh man, I'm actually at two or only. Like I thought it's already turn three, but man, we are we are really behind. Deep cavern, but we kind of have to go for this. It's not a great play, but it, uh, the bat forces it, and they have another one mana on this card, but we have lands to do it. Tiny bones, huh? Alright, alright, I see how it is. Do you think they want to steal this room? I think if they do it, I'm fine with it. Let's go for this one, because this one is way more important. Alright, alright guys. We can do so much. With the hand that we have right now, we can absolutely win the whole game. Alright, they decided to do it before hitting damage. And because I guess they are hoping for a room. I'll be honest, this, this play makes zero sense to me. Like, why would you not deal damage first? Do you not know how Warlock works? I, I think they don't. Alright, this this damage can be scary, but we have we have sweepers, so it shouldn't be the biggest deal. I, I think you now attack. Alright, good. I think they like they could play this turn very differently. Alright, we have this. We should go for the uh, sauna, right? That means also on the next turn we can start killing stuff. I honestly think it's so worth it. And we also surveil, so we know what... Yep, this is the card we were talking about. And with two cards a turn, Bandit Talent won't hit us. I think... when we're in such a... I think they don't know how Warlock works. And sure, they can do it, but they don't have mana because they played Warlock. I mean, if you did it now, you would take the Brotherhood's end. So, but you know, just mythic, you know, not, no biggie. Okay, we would top the, uh, the answer anyway, so I guess that's kind of the same. 
and do can we can we use something so three mana goes to the end we only have three mana we cannot really do anything with it and i still prefer this this is such a perfect answer to what we are seeing and yeah we probably don't want and now we are doing two cards a turn oh this is this is a pretty nice one maybe at some point at least this is the card that is great for discarding so I, I guess it's a great draw because now whenever I have to discard, I know exactly what to do. Uh, sure. So we have mana and we can make this play. I'll take it. It's a, it's a decent one. And do we need to do something? Because I kind of don't need more lands, I think. Yeah, let's make sure that we have enough cards. I think I could play one. But I don't want to re Oh, right, I forgot about this one. Okay, so I should play the land. Forgot about the extra card, though. But it shouldn't make any difference. And now we have a 3-3. Tree -tree. It's still nice. Uh, if they go for this play, that's absolutely great for us. Because we are outvaluing them. They only have ruthless negotiations, while we have the whole deck of card advantage. And <laughs> even with those draws, we will absolutely win. At some point. Let's go for this one. Let's draw some cards. And see, we decline respectfully. We play this. And we go for a la another launch. We just need to hit our card and we should be golden. And by drawing two cards a turn, we will draw it. Man, ill-timed explosion is insane card, especially with rooms because they get discarded and they deal like 8-10 damage easily. Uh, I, at this point, we are just laughing at the discard. Like, we don't even care, bro. I will actually discard removal even if they have showered it. Good job. Yep. Yep. And we will see who has all the cards discarded. <laughs> they will never do all of this. This doesn't do anything. They can sacrifice it for a scry. And probably their card is mostly dead. So we will try to play ill-timed explosion again to draw even more cards. I guess I could scry first, but it's not worth it. Let's start with this and see what we hit. All right, those are cards. We respectfully decline. Let's go with Reef. And I mean, this should be the play. And that's a 5-5. Five five. It would be perfect if we could uh, counter spell, but you know, it's fine. It's fine. I think their best bet is uh, hitting Shorded right now, but uh, I will keep attacking and then they will start attacking. So we weld them. And worst case, we can just go for 11 damage a turn. I mean, maybe unlock the room that kills Shorted. That's also an option. <laughs> All right, the whales are coming. You can see the card advantage just stacks. When you cannot answer this, uh, at some point you will just get absolutely destroyed. Sure. When I win, and they have to minus. You know which means that we can play this on bear game because we still lose the creature. We target this. We pay this. And we sacrifice this for extra scry. Why not? I mean, I'm, I'm taking all the explosions, man. And Lidiana gets exiled as well. We have more mana. Man, we have so much mana for those rooms. We just would love to start hitting some of the rooms that we have in this deck. Perfect. Finally. So now we can go for this guy. I, I, I think we should have something we don't have in the board. Perfect. This is the one. And now we can go for this. And play the mid locker because I actually want all the uh, all the rooms here. Even though we don't, don't hit anything, we protect it against uh, you know any kind of discard. And with counter spell, moment we untap on this turn, we win the game. So I wouldn't be surprised if our opponent scoops right now. And uh, we especially have wells to win the game if we don't want to go for the room. So even though they have really good draw, like they are top decking Liliana after Liliana every turn, it won't really matter. I should probably go for the counter spell. And we can attack Liliana with this if we really want, but we do not. Can I win the game? Like we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I actually win on the next turn. That's good. <laughs> I like winning on the next turn. Let's go for if I don't need. Uh, I don't need this one. I'm I'm unlocking all the rooms, bro. <laughs> right. I should probably kill Liliana or just focus on this game plan, but why would we if we're winning on the next turn? 
I could kill Liliana right now, but why, why would we care? Hopeless nightmare. I mean, now I can kill Liliana. So that means we are killing her. Our opponent has literally nothing. And this, and this is hilarious. And I think we are winning at the upkeep, unless I, I count it wrong, which might happen as well. So let's see if, if we are winning or not. Yep, our opponent wants to scry. <laughs> like, winning with those rooms is absolutely hilarious. I love the fact that you play the first part and later you just have all those rooms for unlocking. And sure. And I won! We won with, <laughs> with having eight unlocked rooms. Alright, guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. We're going first. And let's see, top 700. Alright, sure, sure. We are doing something right. We have, a, we have quite a lot of removal, so... I honestly am ho hopeful about this one, and we have card advantage with the, st the steaming sauna, right? If we get to turn five, we can do a lot. All right, we probably will have to counter uh, talents. Yeah, definitely will be a problem. So let's keep our counter spells ready, and definitely not on this turn. All right. Uh, Taking turn 5 to play the, the sauna will be super hard, but if we can do it, uh, we instantly get a new card, and also maybe if they don't have get loss, we keep it. Alright, they are trying to force some reaction. They are not getting it, and they have the fountain port. Here you go. Exactly, thank you. <laughs> I was waiting for this one. Alright, good. This is uh, an artifact, but I, I'm not sure if we really care about it. Alright, this way we can prevent a lot of their shenanigans as soon as possible. And this feels like mono white, it seems that Forge is less popular suddenly and we have mostly mono white version. And what mana do we have? Uh, we want island for this one. And let's not make a sound because they're still getting hit with a counter spell with if they have another talent. Second damage. Do you have another one? Without, uh, you know. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> as long as we are playing lands, it's fine. It's fine. Fountain port. This could be a nice one, but you know what? I want my rooms. I think rooms are better. And so, what do we play on the next? I guess I could kill this. But I think this is the turn when we really want to counter something. Uh, if we can catch them without the talent, this should be going really good for us. Yep, so they are burning this just for scry probably. Bottom, they are trying to find their talent. You could say that they have no talent right now. <laughs> oh well. Uh, so uh, we take 2 damage from rabbits. And we try to counter spell something cool. Ah, you're doing something. Uh, it would be better if we had some rooms. Thank you. Really appreciate it, man. Like, I was waiting for those plays. <laughs> Alright, that's huge. That's huge. Also, maybe rooms will be a little bit better. Uh, we could go for the whale. If they have get lost, they will play it, right? However, here we are guaranteed to draw a land. Uh, so, sorry. <laughs> Not a land, a card, but... Alright, it wasn't a land, that's great. So even if they kill the sauna, we already basically got the value. Uh, innocence, sure. But that means that we can get a good brotherhood sand. And we are doing... I think this will die at the end step, to be absolutely honest, but we can counter it. And that's good. That's good. We could try to put this at the top of the library if they attack. It's not the worst. Let's see what the card... Oh my god, this is the card. I need it. I need... This is something we needed. So with this, they will get star... Uh, like, crazy card, though. We need two for the whale. I could start killing those. I know it's a strange play, but I think it's good. Like, they don't have huge targets, and we want to mitigate the damage because the Innocence 
uh, will get uh, wailed, basically. That's the idea. So it doesn't die and they don't have this enchantment. And we can still uh, play a counter spell on the same turn. Like, you can kind of get rid of this, but uh, you, you need to assume that they will start getting all the cardo in the world. So the, the, the later you do it, the better, in a way. Ah, oh, that's rough. Every, oh, and they drew two of them in 15 cards, that's way above average. Oh, that's not great. Alright then, so we need to catch them with, uh, count, uh, with this uh, on something else. I mean, it is what it is, but at least we prevent double cardo, so that's huge. And we can try the whale. I mean, this is a good plan so far, it's working. Uh, the problem is that they got this caretaker talent, and that's more than I expected, and more than I wanted. So we need to, you know, spice the tempo a little bit here. We could go for the whale, but I don't think it will be good enough. We can go for two rooms, that's something. Uh, if they play this, we cannot counter it yet. And well is pretty decent overall. This will be a 4-4, four, four. this will be a 6-6, six, six, but we have more mana. All right, let's go like this, because if we draw another room, that should be really nice. And don't forget, we are doing two cards a turn, so we can still keep up with our opponent, and we actually have an instant win con. And, I mean, we are, man, this is top 700, we actually grinded them out of value somehow. Right, our opponent is going first, and we have some interaction, but it's kinda slow, so it can go either way. Uh, honestly, I think this is a good demolition field uh, target, we'll probably discard uh, towards the tower later. Yes, yes please, uh, this is a big card, like we really want this. If we can get to this, we can start unlocking rooms really quickly. It's basically like having two extra lands. Alright. I really want to have a counter spell for the next turn. Even though it, uh, you know, makes us a little bit slower, unless we draw a natural land. Yeah, I think this is better. Maybe we should... Yep. See? This is huge counter spell. Huge. Absolutely huge. Alright. A little bit punished, but this is a good discard target. And we need more lands and more rooms. I mean, so far so good. Uh, let's see if they have another bandit's talent, or maybe like Shelly. Preacher. Preacher is manageable. We can even kill it at the end step. Yeah, I think this is a good deal. Even though we are wasteful with, uh, you know, Cardo, I think it's good enough. We go for this, and that means this is in the board, and now we can start forever getting this extra value. Every time we draw a rope, we get extra value. And we can even cast this one for free on the next turn. Sure. I think they will lose. I don't think they have enough value to beat our value. Sure, they can go with the funk. It actually might be meaningful. I would love to torch the tower, but we are not in the position to do so. Uh, we could go for the for the sauna. You know what? We take this one turn off and we will win uh, and we will like get value for the rest of the game. All right, we have the setup. This is a very nice draw. So they really want to draw cards with this, but they are not outvaluing us this way. Hopeless nightmare, absolutely. Please forgive me. Torch the tower is actually better here. And don't forget we are doing two cards a turn. See, they are trying to kill us with the Hopeless Nightmares, Misha's Foundry, and what is the last card? Uh, the Bandit Talent, right? That's... Alright, this is huge. We survived, and suddenly we can go for the Promising Stairs for a single point of mana, while also keeping Negate and Torch the Tower and drawing extra cards. And for our opponent, that should really tell that there is a problem for them. We only have one counter spell right now, so we need to cherish it. I think they might not attack uh, into open mana. This is a good deal for us. However, this is extremely good card. I mean, like, extremely good card. I, I don't like this play. I honestly would prefer to keep it, and if not recording, I actually think I would take it. <laughs> but we can probably beat the value. 
definitely not the most epic uh, draw of the game. However, we can go for this one. We unlock it and we get something else. What do we don't have? And uh, this is nice. This can draw a lot of cards. This one draws a card every single turn and we can... Uh, can we play it on this turn? No, we only have three mana. I actually still like it more, man. And we only have one, so it's better for the win con. And we even have the Spire, but we are not using it. All right, drawing extra cards is super nice. So even if they draw shorted, we can already kind of answer it with double torch the tower, and one of them is unbergging. <laughs> but you know, I think I think uh, we are starting to win. Man, this is also another high ranked player. So I'm I'm happy with this one. No bargain. Let's kill it. And I don't think they can save it in any way. So that means, yep, yep, they they got overwhelmed with the rooms. We are doing so many cards a turn that they know they will never get uh, around it. And the bandit talent was countered very early. It is going first, which normally is a disaster. But look at our great hand. We can just kill everything. I would definitely prefer to not draw only... What the hell with those lands, bro? Like, what? what is this? Seven lands in nine cards? What the hell, Shuffler? Please, let me play. Let me play the game. So, uh, surveillance really help here. Uh, we, we will probably make sure that the next draw is not a land. They're a little bit slow with the, the shot. All right, this is interesting. Let's make sure that we keep drawing none. Look at the man. If not those surveillance, we basically would be out of the game right now. Doing two cards on top of this flute is just disaster. So man, I'm I, I'm so happy with those lands. Oh boy, I'm I'm scared. Attacks a player. I wonder if they have something with haste. Let's go with the reef. Those are enchantments. For for a moment, I thought this is an artifact. And I can kill all of them with a single card that was dead so far. However, that means they are playing creatures, right? Here you go. Here you go. Brotherhood Sand hits this perfectly. I wonder... They probably have something. We could fire so Victor this. But this is a really good card that gives so much value. I don't want to waste it. This is so good, man. We have another one, so maybe we could waste it. No, I think they have something that protects it. But okay, but then... I guess we can deal damage in response, so it dies anyway. They need two protection spells. Oh, that went way easier than I expected. I, I thought they have this one mana pro, uh, hexproof thing that gives plus one, plus one. So I predicted this will be a 3-4. It won't die, and then I will target it with Torch the Tower. I mean, this is perfect so far. Man, our deck is prepared for this kind of stuff. <laughs> and, yeah, that's it. If they do the Hexproof right now, that means on the next turn, it's still here. However, they have the token, so, so that's a big deal. That is a big deal. Alright, we have the Whale. Okay, we need to be smart about it. I can kill this, but then they get all the value. So I think what we really go for is this. And we try to catch them with zero creatures. We know that they have nothing. If they cannot attack, they cannot unlock the, you know, what is it? Dollmaker shop. And they might not have any more creatures. Ah? Huh? Alright, they're unlocking stuff, but they're not doing anything else. And now we have a counter spell that draws cards. I think we are pretty fine here. We survived the onslaught. Moment we start hitting our rooms, we are getting insane value. And you know what? Let's, I mean, listen. If if we are winning like this, okay, this is this is the play. Oh boy, can I risk it for one turn? Yes. The answer is yes. With this, we are outvaluing them super hard for the rest of the game. They cannot keep up with this card, and we are already getting the sweet value. Like. Two to three turns and they, they, they will just scoop. Yep, they, they kind of lost it. Uh, so let's go with this. We don't need to tap ever again. I honestly don't... I like whales, but... Whale, bro. Chill. 
Like, first we get food and then we get all the wires from the deck. Like, Shaffer, what's going on in your life? Uh, we just want to keep uh, three steps ahead. By the way, we can copy the creature if we want. Three and three. Bro, just be my guest because you are not getting a creature ever in this deck. <laughs> I mean, uh, sure, sure. <laughs> Alright guys, we are on the draw against top 400 player in the world. Can we beat him with rooms? And he's the assassin. Uh, after seeing this rank, you know that it is monoret of some kind. Like This is just a, an instant revelation, basically. And this is a great card, but do we even have time for this? On the draw, we probably want as much removal as we want, as we can, because we already have this room. And if we can unlock, uh, you know, the five mana room, we can instantly outvalue them. So that's all we need to outvalue them if we have to. They have green mana. Our opponent is an expert in magic, so he needs to, like, meticulously use those pump spells because that's yeah, you use red mana to buff it and green mana to protect it. That's it. End of story. So uh, what we will try to do, if we try to kill it, they will protect it probably. So I think. I think we'll wait one more turn. We want to kind of catch them, uh, so they can use one mana to protect every turn. So we want to overload them, overload. And uh, black mana, so they have the cell sword. Sure, no blockers. All right. So if we do this, uh, they will protect, but that means, so we will get more damage probably this way, but we drain them out of cards and we're at 16. All right, that's great. If that's everything they are doing, I'm super fine with it. Here's the Cell Sword. Our opponent is going a little bit crazy here. So what do I want to do? This is a nice target for the Furnace. So let's go for it. Uh, they have one red mana, so they cannot protect it. Uh, and they are losing creatures at really high rate right now. We go for the tap land. Now we have good mana for the future, so we never need to pain ourselves. And if they go for like double creature, they should really play more creatures, but maybe they actually don't even have it. Alright. We could just go for the Brotherhood's end. It's not bad. They have priority, so they have something. Is that a pump spell? Is that a pump spell? Let's check. I don't. So they cannot pump it above three toughness on this turn. So let's use it. Unless they use multiple cards. That is okay. Right? This is five damage. And I love how red, like new red cards, punish you for killing red creatures. <laughs> which is like the main counterplay to red creatures. So uh, they got an extra card while dealing five damage as the counterplay of us daring to actually try to remove a red creature. Uh, we still have sweepers, they probably don't have too much left, so the game should be easy from now. Four damage, should be good enough. So we play it before we go for the card, or we play land or something, so we deal the maximum damage. And as you can see, our top 400 cannot really go against our super cool rooms. <laughs> This is hilarious. It's always the same deck. Like, whatever they splash, it's always the same core. Like, let's see all the green cards they have used this game. Let's see how Gruul or... Man, they actually play three color. Well, you can see. Like, they used all the red cards anyway. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed the room madness. Like, <laughs> I honestly super like rooms. I wanted to make deck with this for so long. Like, I even considered making this on like day one. Uh, however, uh, the the interesting part with this one, the best rooms in my opinion are Smoky Lounge. Uh, I mean, for the like dedicated room control, right? Because Annex, for example, is great, but it doesn't need to go into the uh, room deck. It's just a good card advantage. Smoky Lounge goes perfectly into room. Control control creates two extra mana and honestly this is one of the reasons this deck can be so explosive like having two extra mana every single turn is huge especially that all of the rooms are kind of expensive to unlock and yeah the the big i think the best room right now like the smoky lounge is just for you know just just 
accelerating you so we can play your game plan however if you can get steaming sauna on the next turn uh, it's such a big deal man it, it's, it's it just takes over the game super quickly every time i had this in the board in like three turns you are kind of winning the game especially that you have so many interaction spells including counter spells so that means if you get, get card advantage you can just keep trading one for one one for one and at some point they have nothing and you have so much also with all the rooms you don't need to spend so many cards from your hand so effects like fires of victor and the throwing furnace are a, bit, a little bit better you are doing two cards a turn and at the same time you can unlock rooms without spending a card and that deals basically extra damage in a way so yeah okay before we go over to this deck i want to say a huge thank you to all our patrons for you know allowing us to go crazy like this and you know just have some fun in high mythic and yeah this one is special so i hope you enjoyed this one and uh, honestly central elevator is like the weakest one of all the rooms however this is your win con so that's kind of expected uh, four mana tutor is like it looks better than it is all right <laughs> because uh, you actually cannot go for the room that you already have. So every time you have like four offs, you probably cannot look for either lounge or the Roaring Furnace, which are the most important rooms. So most of the time you go for the Meat Locker or this uh, chart foyer so yeah, uh, this honestly, this is the Mythic Rare. It should be the best one. In my opinion, it's like the weakest one, especially that we can directly ramp from three to five with the launch. So that means that having the steaming sauna is like instantly very accessible, even if you don't hit land for the turn. And after you play this, you will start hitting your lands. So this one is okay, it's cheaper, but the exile effect makes it a little bit worse. You kind of have to play those cards. Sometimes you will hit a counter spell and sometimes you just don't want to tap out, uh, even if you had hit a whale or something. So this room is most to be unique room so we can get our win con easier and you always have something to search for however if this is your first room and if you don't have acceleration of any kind i find that that it's kind of good for hitting more rooms or lands so usually you hit one of the two you play it main phase and you are happy with this uh, until you can you know get to steaming sauna so you have better cardo so yeah uh, honestly with all the sweepers that we have like and uh, towards the tower not a sweeper but removal and sweepers into fire of victor and whale so we have really uh, like quick removal in this deck into brotherhoods and an ill times explosion i think Loki, the biggest card of this deck is Ill-Timed Explosion, because in this deck it's a full sweeper that also cycles you cards, or just card advantage if you are you are having the wrong matchup. So this card really carries you hard, especially if Brotherhood's end. Like you have quite a lot of sweepers and you have insane amount of removal on top of this. And I think that's the reason that we kind of went ahead and right, uh, <laughs> the stats. I actually played quite a few games with this one and we actually beat Mythic. And even even though it's not like crazy result honestly we played against some of the best players like top 400 top 600 so i'm really happy with this win rate i think it's pretty decent uh, do i think it's the most competitive deck absolutely not uh, rooms are not like you know uh, our meta right now which is unfortunate because there's so much thought into those cards and i think they are amazing and they make up for extremely interesting game plan so i, I mean it's it's a little bit of shame that we have all the smaller stuff that uh, doesn't really allow to play this however as you can can see we can challenge those decks so i think this is decent enough and i hope you will like it so guys that's it for today thank you for watching and really appreciate you here and yeah there's no room for anything more to add so <laughs> enjoy and see you tomorrow